Chapter 963 Becoming Samurai Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D cast. I am the best boy in the world and this is give and take. I'm hustling every day to get those doubloons. Hmm. As a pirate. A noble profession. I am. Cough them up. They call that the oldest profession, as I understand it. Being a pirate. Uh, moving on, <laughs> we've got chapter 963, Becoming Samurai, before us. Uh, and let's check in with our cover story, Gang Beige, Oh My Family, Volume 13. The Germs pirate crew attacked the country while the king was away. What of this, Gib? Uh, yeah, so new uh, jobber pirate crew. Indeed. <laughs> Precisely. Um, <laughs> you know, they got the token girl, the token captain, the token man in the back with the, who's big, the token guy yep. with a skull on his head, and the token uh, guy who has no, like, no, uh, he's just got a jacket and a beard, I guess. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. They're just here to be raffle waffle stomped by Capone and his boys. And yes. this may lead to a hint about Lola. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, so... I suppose, based on last time, the big lady mm. who was kissing, who was from the Doflamingo Pirates, she's not redeemed. She might be with the Germs Pirates now or something. Mm. And she and they've I taken over the know. country or something. Yeah, I guess these guys are just raiding. Maybe they just got here. They're like, ooh, this country's in disarray. I read the newspaper. We're going to fuck it up. But then Beige will oh, yeah. make they that They attacked the country. I don't they know. didn't take it over. They're just attacking. Yeah. So yeah. Beige will look- attack... Dress Rosa, and then people will be like, ah, oh, thank you, King Capone. They'll make him king. Won't that be fun? Fuck you, King Riku. The royal family sucks. Where's King Sora? Uh, oh, uh, Queen Kyrie. All right, there's nothing else to say about this. Pirates are going to fight Capone. There you go. It's what's going to happen. Yes. Uh, all right, on to the chapter. Becoming Samurai. Let's see what's happened. Let's go check in with our elephant man. Yes, Hello, on Zo. On Sushushishini, its big elephant. Uh, This was long, long ago, centuries back. The minx made a solemn vow uh, with the Kozuki clan of Wano. So, um... So I I was wrong. I forgot that this was a very ancient vow that they made last time. (laughs) I... I, They didn't say... Well, I can't remember them saying that it was an ancient, ancient vow. I just thought that, like, the -hmm. the Nekomamushi and Inuarashi were Mm -hmm. friends with Mm -hmm. the Wano tribe, therefore... That's the mink connection, but it turns out it was even before that. I think what we can establish through this, since we know the Kozuki clan is the one who made the poneglyphs, they have a road poneglyph here. Like, they uh, they say this yeah. centuries and centuries, and we, we know it was 800 years ago was the Void Century. Seems to me that, like, whenever they made the things, probably right after the Void Century and sent out the poneglyphs, it was probably at that time they made yeah. this alliance I, with I the, guess I guess we could have yeah. maybe seen this coming if we had mm-hmm. remembered that. Uh, but, Oops. you know... Oopsie. Well, now we know, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so there's a little cat and little dog, a little cute little YouTube thumbnail, uh, <laughs> but as a characters. Yes, they're excellent. <laughs> I like all the all the big tall boys, the giraffes. I guess those are the, the knights or whatever, the big boys in there. Maybe trainees. Yeah. And here they are saying, uh, ooh, what's that? We, we are allied with these boys from so, Wano. So, all right. Sounds fun. This here, this symbol on the wall, um, mm-hmm. that bird in the middle... Is the Kozuki mm-hmm. symbol, right? Right. The, the crane, I believe it is. The thing around the outside with the flower and mm-hmm. the, the cross, is that a mink symbol mixed in, or is it also the Kozuki clan thing? I think that whole thing is the Kozuki clan symbol. I'm just going to Google it real quick and I don't, see. I don't remember I mean, that that other bit. Maybe it's like a... You know how like the fishmen have this, the, and the sun pirates, the sort of like fusing symbols together? This may get updated, but I just Googled it, and, like, I see, like, Kozuki family symbol, and it's the whole thing with the cross okay. on the outside, well, so I assume it's the family, man. Um, so, after, I guess, learning about this history and their connection with these boys on another country, our cat and dog, cat dog, intrepid duo, have decided that sounds yeah, fun. Let's just, go explore the world. They're just little, so little babies go. going on a little ex- exploration on a tiny little dinghy boat. And they get into uh, <laughs> tremendous trouble because they're on the Grand Line, goddammit. And there's, yes. there's terrible things happening. They get, and Wano has rough seas all, around it. They get rough seed 
and then they, you know, as we saw, washed up on Wano. And immediately, um, along with uh, Kawamatsu... I don't know how the fuck they made it, by the way. It seems fairly preposterous they would survive this journey, but fair enough, they did. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. You know, like, it happened to Luffy, kind of. Yeah, but Luffy and his boys were able to climb the, the thing by hooking to a koi or whatever, so they at least got up the waterfall safely. How the fuck did these guys get up the waterfall? Uh, luck. They just fell, yeah, okay. they just fell I, up I there. They fine. just fell they right figured up it out. there. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, Kawamatsu the Kappa, who I didn't realize was young, but of course he is. He's a little baby here as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Adorable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they're all being strung Indeed. up to be killed because uh, the people of Wano are horrible. Very xenophobic. Very racist. Very zoophobic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They hate furries in Wano, and God bless them. <laughs> yeah, so they're about to be killed or beaten or something. Uh, Lord Odin has just got some dinner, bringing a fish on, and he sees them being the attacked, and he saves mm -hmm. the day. He punches the lights out of everybody there, and everyone else runs away. He's like, guys, it's 2019. Stop being racist. We've had enough of that. It's time to move on with our lives. And uh, there you go. Fair enough. Stop Fair being enough. racist and start being gracist. Have some grace. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Uh, so there he is. The boys are saved, and he's about to leave. Lol, epic joke. He's going to leave without untying them, but then he does. I, I don't even know that comedy. he does. I don't even know that he does. because he, he seems and he to, just walked off. He, yeah, he, he <laughs> seems to just not care about them like he's like happy that they're alive but they seem to have yeah. followed him home and all that <laughs> indeed indeed so there they are we got so this is this is how nekamushi and inu arashi and kawamatsu all fell into the lap of one kozuki odin and became bosom buddies he saved them they had a meal together had lots of good times and they had nowhere else to go they wanted to meet the kozuki clan anyway and there it is. And then Odin here says, like, oh, yeah, I remember we're allied with the Mink tribe or something. That's cool. We are family. So established. Yep. Worked just great. There it is. There it is. Epic jokes about hot food, cat's tongue. It's a pun in Japanese or something. Excellent work, everybody. And, of course, we get a little bit of backstory here about Kawamatsu as well. And we learn that, uh, oh, him and his mama came to this country. Oh, why yeah. are these people right. getting into Wano? Everyone's getting into Wano. It's supposed to be really hard to do that. What's well, the deal Well, I mean, here? they're fishermen. Like, mama could probably they swim. They just swim on up? <laughs> Fair I, enough. I feel like Fair that's, enough. that's, like, understandable. The one but thing... Why the... of all countries you could go to would you choose Wano that hates outsiders and doesn't want, you know, you there? Well, Seems no, like an odd no choice. I think they're on Wano. Wait, drifted to this comfort. No, they came from outside. They, when we asked came. for help, when they asked for help, like they just drifted here. They didn't mean to come here. I guess. How the fuck do you drift up a waterfall into Wano country? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. matter. They, it they, does they just matter. fell right, right up there. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> the thing that I found weird about this though is like mm -hmm. uh, Kawamatsu, uh, the Kappa. He's like, my mom's yeah. a fisherman. I'm a fisherman, but you know. With her dying breath, she said, Fishmen are always discriminated against. You would likely more survive, mm -hmm. survive more likely if you claimed to be a Kappa. Whoops, I just told you that I'm a Fishman. Like, why would he just well, so he, casually I guess he reveal these guys. that? I know, I know, I, I, I guess he does. But it's like, you know, it, it feels like a bit of a, like, you know, for, for the purposes of this flashback, we don't want to really mm -hmm. get into it. Let's just have him explain it and not think about, you know him divulging this big secret that would get him killed any other place because he doesn't know, know who, well, he doesn't yeah. know that mm -hmm. lord odin is you know like lord odin is like oh he seems like a nice guy but he's super racist well, well, against fishmen like we don't know that lord odin sure. just saved him and said don't discriminate against people based on looks i think it's a pretty safe bet he's not gonna you know be racist when he was just stopping people from attacking them because that's racist or something you know, seems like a pretty safe thing to do at this point. Yeah. It just, uh, by the way, though, yeah. I mean, it, it seems weird to me. I mean, this, this is a very small point, but, like, we are right. he's right now saying, oh, by the way, I'm actually a fish man. And yet the little placard that says, like, that's supposed to be, like, word of God, what this guy is. It says Kappa. But he, he's not really a Kappa. He's a fish man who, like, identifies as a Kappa is this like a trans species thing? Oh, he identifies as well, a cap, so he is one. I mean, I mean, he says you know what I mean. I don't know. Odd. I don't know what the point of him being an, a fishman is. Like he, it, it, like as like a secret. 
I guess it, it just explains... It could, it could just be that there's a type of fishman called a kappa, but I guess Oda didn't want to have that as a new race or something. You know, I mean, when, when you've got a series like One Piece or whatever that has, like, there's certain, like, fictional constructs that exist within the series already. Like, there tends to be a propensity to, like, want to explain otherwise, I don't know, like, somewhat normal phenomenon or something in the terms. And you see that a lot with, like, I don't know, like, Doflamingo's, like, puppeteer powers. I mean, it's a devil fruit. I mean, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, Kawamatsu, he's, like, a weird half-fish, half-human. There's a thing that's pretty close to that in One Piece. It's a fish man. And I guess you just, rather than say, oh, also this totally separate race of Kappa exists in One I, Piece, I, I, it's Yeah, a but, like, I, I feel like yeah. maybe it's just because Kappa is very in Japanese culture and it's not a fish man. Mm -hmm. And there's not, you couldn't possibly be the same thing. Kappa couldn't possibly be a part of a fish man subspecies. Um, I mean, I, I guess it couldn't because Kappas are, like, half turtle and, like, half duck. Or they got, like, a weird duck bill and they're uh, also... Okay. Well, I, I guess know. I don't know what a Kappa is. But I, I also feel like mm -hmm. he's discriminated, like, against because he's a fish man in mm -hmm. Wano, a place where, you know, the, the country's been closed. They even know what a fish man is. If he's just different from people and, you know, they, they find this dog and cat, they're they're going to uh, string them up and beat them and kill them and mm -hmm. crucify them because they're a little different. And, like, why would being a Kappa alleviate any of that? He's still different um, from everyone. He's very obviously yeah, like, different. Th that defense did nothing at all in this very chapter. As we just saw, it made no difference because it's not like, like, in Wano is close to our from the outside world. They probably don't really know what fishmen are and stuff like that, your average person, perhaps unlike other places in, in One Piece. Um, but, uh, like, it strikes me that, like, his point about, like, my mom says fishmen are always discriminated against. Like, it's, it's true that, like, in Wano, they don't, like, know what a fishman is to discriminate, like, historically. But, I mean, in other places, like, the, the origin of other countries' racism against fishmen presumably is just that they're different and weird. And the, the justification of these Wano citizens hating Ka Kawamatsu and his mom is also that they're different and weird. So, like, the origin point is fair there. It's kind of the same you know, central motivating factor of why they're disliked and whatnot. But, I mean, it's being a Kappa, like, I see the idea that's a thing that exists in Wano, so that could kind of be a known quantity, and maybe that helped him later in life, but it sure didn't seem to help him in this incident when he was fucking strung up and yeah. almost crucified it, and burned it could, alive It could be that, like, his mother just wanted him to be safe, and she thought that would help, but it doesn't. Yeah. But he continues to use the name because it's his mother's dying breath, so it's like... Yeah. Honoring yeah. her in a way. Well, it's B by probably the way, not supposed to be, like, thought about this much, but, you know. I, I think it's, it, I think a large part of this is simply to explain that he is, in fact, a Kappa, and it's not, you know, it's not well, that much Well, he is, in fact, a fish man and really. not a Kappa. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Who calls himself a Kappa? By the way, did you, I bet you also love that little image of him as, like, a short stack running with his little arm up, like, oh, shit, gotta, gotta book it. I'm gonna be murdered by this hostile crowd. I really like that oh, yeah, small yeah, little he, Kawamatsu adorable. there. <laughs> um, okay, in any case, there you go. Kawamatsu, he lives off trash, based. And, uh, and now we know his backstory. And so he's grateful as well for, for all Odin boy. Having a great time. He's, he's real happy to have met Odin, so he feels, feels happy. And uh, Okay, and here's the scene where Odin's like, Nice meeting all you guys. Uh, now get the fuck out. They're like, No, please adopt us. We want to be your sons. And there it is. And that's how they join we got, we got more boys. Getting real crowded, getting lots of fun lads here, all training to be samurai. Pretty epic. Pretty epic. And um, we get one little cut here of Denjiro being like, oh, we're getting a lot of boys. Uh, you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But we're running low on money. And what's this? You fucking lent out money again to Orochi? That's pretty fucked up. Uh, can, can you understand me now? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, it's back. Sorry, my internet's been choppy. I no, I get it. I get it. you said. I heard bits and drabs and bips. All, all I was doing was just, here, we, we can cut this part, but, like, I was just summing up what Denjiro was saying to Odin, being like, oh, these guys are power strong, but we're running low on money. And I said that, uh, and you lent money to Orochi. So we'll just, we'll just pick up from there. Um... So here we've got Orochi continuing to like lurk in the background, being like a, a leech off of, of Odin here. And and so, th I mean, this is kind of funny. So uh, Odin here is saying like, even though he is on his own now, he used to work for Yasuye, so I can't just leave him to die. O okay, that's fine. 
But later in the chapter, we see him again, and it doesn't look like he's on his own. He seems to be in the employ of someone, so I'm a little confused as to exactly what this is trying to get at. Wait, where um, is he? Playing? Later on in the chapter, I mean, we just see he appears to be employed. He's wearing, like, the Kozuki crest, I think, and is in, like, right outside the room where Odin is meeting with his dad. So it looks like he's working for, like, the Kozuki clan. Oh, I think, I think what they mean is, like, yeah. he is... Like, on his own, as in, like, living on his own? Like, he goes into work or something? I suppose. Or, like, he's... I don't know whether he's a lord or just a steward or some sort of thing, but, like, he's not, like, directly underneath... I don't know. Like, he's not I don't, you taken know. under the care of, of Yasuo. He's left. It doesn't matter that much anyway. Um, but, okay, we get it. He's being a leech. Uh, uh, Odin is giving him money for some reason... Fair enough. Yeah, Fair he's enough. just it, Odin's a good guy, and he mm. doesn't see Orochi. Orochi doesn't. We we don't really know what his deal is, but he is mm -hmm. he is a little slime ball. So. Definitely a leech. Definitely a liar. Based on what we've seen so far, is is even though you know he's Odin's nice enough to give him money. He had previously lied, said the money was stolen by Odin. We'll see. We'll see what that's about. Uh, but as a result of these money troubles, here goes Raizo and the boys to do a sneaky sneak attack and steal money from Yasuie. <laughs> what a great plan, everybody. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the funds are in disarray or something. There's like, oh, mm -hmm. we need money. Let's go steal from Odin's favorite guy. Why would you steal from him of like all people to steal from? This seems like a foolish move. Um, but in any case, we've, we've seen this before. <laughs> we've seen, uh, you know, th th this scene play out. Yasuye is like, oh, you guys are trying to steal from me. That's fucked up. Why are you doing it? Because Oda needs the money. Hmm, what if I gave you the money you were trying to steal and yes. extra money? Here, here I go with some extra memeable faces. You see that one of, of Izo I put in the chat there? I mean, you, you guys can just look at the chapter. That's that's Izo. That's a oh, very yeah. attractive young man. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. It sort of looks like a clown with that thick uh, black it does. lips. Maybe uh, uh, Izo is Buggy's father, Buggy's mother. We'll, oh, my we'll, we'll God. See. Buggy's, One day. Buggy's, <laughs> Buggy's father slash mother. They both love White makeup. Beard's crew and his, oh his, my his God. son went on to Roger's crew. Oh, my God. <laughs> it all makes sense. Um, how the fuck did Buggy get on this crew? I hope we learn. Well, uh, maybe we'll see. Um, in, in any case, so you know how it goes. Gives him all the money. But but here, here Yasuye is saying, like, here's why I'm giving you the money, boys. Because I believe in Odin, and I want you guys to be, this, this chapter is called Becoming Samurai. I want you to become the last samurai, Tom Cruise. So uh, <laughs> thus begins the I feel epic like, transformation. Well, yes, yeah, so yeah. I think he said that last time. This was brought up as well. Like, I need mm -hmm. to use this money to become good mm -hmm. people for Lord Odin. And right, now right. we see what they do. They read a book. They learn how to say Sesha and Sesho. They and dress Sesho. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. They dress properly, looking like real samurai boys, looking very dapper, very nice. They, they get all the the, uh, the diction and the um, <laughs> manners and stuff, and Lord Odin is having none of it. Stop being weird, he says. Odin himself doesn't change at all during this process. He's the same. But these guys, you, you know, up to this point, it's you know they've been kind of hanging on with uh, Yasui or with with Odin. Obviously, you know, they became like a, a, a group, like a real bunch of, of boys together. But uh, seeing this scene, it's like, now now I'm starting to appreciate how much effort these... Like, this is a scene that's really making me more attached to these characters, especially Kinemon. Because when we first met Kinemon all those years ago at um, uh, at uh, Punk Hazard, he was like just some samurai. There was this abstract notion of like a lord he was serving, of like the shogun or whatever, and of like an epic quest. But now we're getting all the details into exactly why He's, like, so committed to this cause, and we're seeing, like, how much effort he's willing to put in to change, not just, like, get stronger, but to, like, change himself from, like, the Yakuza asshole that uh, he was as a young boy, and to get, get some get some school and get some book learning, and really uh, commit themselves. Even, like, Ashura Doji, who is just some big, like, bandit monster man, even he hits the books, and becomes a distinguished member of society, and it's, it's just kind of charming to see yeah. how much effort they put into to Odin on his behalf. So they can be good retainers and, and not embarrass him and be a, uh, you know, help him up his standing in the world by becoming uh, paragons of Wano society. It's very cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, so then, their three years training, training doing, montage, yeah. th three years later from that mm -hmm. point. I don't know how many years have passed in 
like this thing, but uh, the whole flashback. Yeah, because because Denjiro seven, Denjiro has like shot up. He's really tall and looks yeah, like a completely yeah. different person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, thirty years from the present, the flower capital. Um, they're they're just you know strutting their stuff. I I just wanted to, to note the the pig, Indeed. the mountain, <laughs> who was sliced completely in half. Completely in half. And was clearly it's just stitched has back just been together. stitched back together in like a. Um, <laughs> I, I like. Okay, I guess <laughs> they have really good vets in Wano. I guess Chopper will meet like the best vet in the world. It's the ancient Chinese secret, I guess, that they used. I mean, this is this defies belief so that this thing would be all his organs. Because oh, it wasn't they like opened a thing his where, like, stomach. They got him out of his stomach and intestines. All the people survived. So like yeah. his stomach was in half. That's probably stitched like, as well. <laughs> We know there's a thing with swordsmen in One Piece and in, like, larger, I don't know, like, shonen sword stuff, but definitely in One Piece, where, like, a swordsman of enough skill can choose to cut what he wants and to not cut that which he does not wish to cut. But, like, we, this guy was definitely cut. This was not a factor. <laughs> definitely cut in half. Um, so I don't really know Go. what the explanation is for that. that. That pig is living in the biggest society, like, right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I want to know how so he got true. those scars. You know what I'm saying? It's very... Uh, oh, 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 damn. So true. So true. Um. <laughs> and, well, and that's also, it. And also, if you notice the uh, baby pig. So baby mountain. Oh, mountain yeah, he's grown up a little bit. How nice. How nice. No, I mean... Uh, well, we didn't... Oh, oh yes, that's, that's right. That's probably the little baby that they I, for, that I they forgot there was a baby already. I thought it was like right. somehow... <laughs> This guy chopped in half, managed to get laid, and made a baby. Hmm. <laughs> but no, he already had. Maybe it's a mother. Maybe it's a female. She she already maybe. had the little mountain. Uh, which and it, it I, even I says feel here. Like, I feel like yeah. Yeah. Mountain Junior is definitely definitely going to play a part in whatever happens. Well, in, well in the, he plays a little part. The, the flower capital in the present. Oh, you think so? We haven't seen hmm. him yet, so it's like, of course, he's going to be really big. He's going to be really strong. And he's going to be Maybe. really friendly to Well, hang the on. They Kinemon say, Mountain Junior, get in the crate. And then we turn the page and we see a big double spread. And I think that that's Mountain Junior upon which that palanquin or, or whatever of, uh, of Odin is riding upon, if I'm not mistaken. It, oh, yeah. I didn't notice, but it does look like that. It's got a little ear. But that's cool. So, so anyway... The larger thing going on here is, of course, so in walk, ah, what? Who are those beautiful, dignified samurai? It Could it be? Were those really Odin's retainers? Oh, they're so attractive and handsome and sick looking. And there they are. They've made a transformation. Everybody's totally sick now. They're all very dignified. And uh, Kinemon has either stopped dyeing his hair or is dying. I like the idea, rather, that he has just bizarrely natural blonde hair. And now he's choosing to dye his hair black just to look more distinguished. Uh, but it, it more likely is that that's not there, the case. There's no uh, way but... that it was blonde. It's probably like blue or pink or well, something. Well, that's what they said about Ichigo Kurosaki in Bleach, yet the series was called Bleach because he had bizarrely red hair like his it mom. It was called Bleach because he bleached his hair. No, inaccurate. Okay, well, also Orihime had uh, red hair. Okay, but doesn't matter. Nonetheless, um, they, look, they look good, squatting up, looking very, very dignified, very handsome. Good job, everybody. Kanjiro in the back, the least important. <laughs> uh, poor bastard. I like all these guys. Everybody looks great. Everybody looks really cool. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're Odin. Oh, uh, you know, yeah. speaking, yeah. speaking of uh, mm -hmm. everyone being, you know, looking sick as hell, mm -hmm. uh, it looks <laughs> like Odin's father is being sick. Ah, very true. Very he's true. getting he's Appears getting insickened by by some sort of thing. Could it be poison? Could Orochi ooh, rubbing ooh. his hands together be poisoning the the show? Yeah, I mean, right there, right there, you got Kozugi or fucking Orochi right outside rubbing his hands. They're like a weird sickness. By the way, this is like exactly the plot kind of of um, uh, every monarchy Jojo ever Part made. One. Oh. Yeah, Jojo Part One is the thing that everybody will probably remember. But no nonetheless, I mean, he's. Almost definitely poison. Like, he looks totally healthy. We're just told that he's ill, uh, so fair enough. It's, it's also be the, the plot to Fire Emblem uh, yeah. 7, the tutorial oh, yeah. chapters. <laughs> oh, right. That, wasn't that, like, Lin's grandpa or something? Lin's grandpa was being poisoned by the evil Uncle Lundgren. Mm, that's right. Mm. And then we stab him in the fucking head and kill him. And that was Fuck pretty you. sick. 
loved doing that. <laughs> but, and as it says right here, tragically, this would be the last time they ever speak. Oh, man, that's sad. That's yeah. too bad. They haven't, it looks like they're having a good time. They're laughing, you know. I mean, this is the first time they've met since he, uh, since he was, like, undisowned, and he's become, like, a great guy that his dad's proud of. It, it warms my heart. It's really nice. It's really, really Yeah, and I really and like how Odin is, like, um, you know, if I've become a fine man, it's thanks to you. Like, he's thanking his dad, even though yeah. his dad Aww. didn't do anything necessarily, and it's just sort of like... You know what his dad did? His dad had standards of behavior, which I think is a good thing for parents to have, to a degree, to, to shape their kids. Um, yes, I, I don't know, fair enough. In any case, uh, later dad, too bad you're dead, soon. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, next page, boom, smash cut, baby! Is that the fucking Moby Dick washed up on the fucking shores of Wano? Oh my god, it's Whitebeard and his uh... whole fucking crew! Holy right. shit, that escalated quickly. Correct me if quickly. I'm wrong, but is this the yeah. first um, flashback in which old Whitebeard is seen fully and in, like, you know, like, without any, By like, old, mysterious... old, do you mean young? Uh, <laughs> old as in, like, past Whitebeard. Uh, I believe that this is. I don't remember ever seeing him with long hair Because we've seen, we've like, seen like a flashback where he's just sort of, like, wistfully looking off and he doesn't even have his beard yet or his mustache. Oh, well... What about that one flashback where him and Roger were hanging out in that like cherry blossom area, and yeah. uh, which was during Marine Fort? I, yeah, I feel like I feel like those flashbacks were like he's partially obscured or you don't see all of him, but this is like maybe it's just maybe. him. This is just what he looks like or looks like. Yeah, he's full display, full and he display looks great. Here, this and... is a seriously cool pirate design. Yeah, he looks dope. You can see why he is the most based pirate upon the seas, uh, based on this shit. God damn, he's huge. And, uh, I don't know, won't bother naming all these guys, but, like, I did a little digging, and I found that, like, all the guys here are definitely either, like, you got Vista, looking dapper as fuck on the left there, you got Marco, still a young man growing up, who will become probably the first Diamond Joe captain. in the back. Diamond Joes, that guy with the chain chomp, that's another guy whose name I forget. That seems to be Whitey Bay there. Um, the, that's, like, Andre, one of the allies, and that guy on the left, that big schlubby-looking dude's another ally from the big war. So these are all either, like, division commanders or, like, his close allies who fought with him. Is that Andre as in Andre the Giant, as in exactly the wrestler? I, I did look into it, and that character is named after Andre the Giant, yes. he looks just <laughs> like him. Yep, so well, well done, Oda. Well done. Captured his visage well. Um, but, it, I mean, this is great. Like, we love seeing... I love seeing all the characters that were introduced during, um... You know, the Marine Fort arc. And to see a little bit of their histories here, doing stuff. Whitey Bay, fan favorite, looking very sexual. Uh, uh, it's right. sick. Very so nice hat. The Moby Dick and the Whitebeard mm -hmm. Pirates have crash, crash landed on one. They just fell up that fucking waterfall they just fell like right everybody up the, else. <laughs> they have not, the thing I, I find interesting is that, you yeah. know, Whitebeard, this mm -hmm. is the Whitebeard Pirates. This is past the Rocks Pirates. Um, right, apparently, right. in all of his years pirating he's never even mm -hmm. heard of wano because he doesn't he didn't know this was here it's like why is there an island up here what the hell's going on i mean there's i mean let's let's not forget the fact that like the world of one piece like nami's goal is to make a world map because nobody has a world map in one piece so there's lots of mysterious places i know but like, very... it, it feels like someone like mm -hmm. whitebeard would know where he was, but I maybe not. Yeah, I hear you. Well, he's a worldly guy, but there just happens maybe, to be an Maybe it's just been like a couple of. hundred years since anyone has even remembered Wano, and it's like everyone's forgotten Possible. about it by, by now. And this is the first yeah, time. Yeah, that, that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't the, surprise well, me. this is not the first time, so the, the, the minks just beat him to the punch. Yeah, but they have an ancient history with the with the Kozuki clan, so it makes sense well, they, they need, would... Uh, well, Kawamatsu beat them to the punch, and he didn't know fucking know. Well, well, I mean, I agree. It's bizarre. <laughs> but th those guys, it seems that they did, like, somehow stumble upon this place accidentally. So as long as that's established, I mean, I, I guess it's fine. And it better be an accident. If it's not an accident, that's weird and strange. Um, and there should be an explanation. But whatever. I yeah. don't know. So, yeah, we got all the guys here. And uh, Lord Odin is immediately... Oh, actually, I'm sorry. The, the one off. point I just wanted to say... It does seem to be that they literally, they saw a waterfall, they chose to climb it, and it turns out it was Wano. That is very unlikely, uh, but crazy things happen sometimes, I guess. I so mean, there you, know, you go. You, you, you sail around, you see a waterfall. Hmm. Maybe people see the waterfall all the time, but nobody thinks to climb up it, and Whitebeard is one of the first. 
that maybe, has, the, has the stones to try because he's just so fucking cool. He's very big, very large individual. Uh, yeah, he could probably use some earthquake powers to make a big wave, just whoop, wash him up over the top of the waterfall or some shit. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. So anyway, at, they mm-hmm. also not just at the the coast. They seem to be at a port. This is Port Itachi. You can see other ships on the left and the right. Right, right. That's true. So um, they know this island is inhabited, and then, mm-hmm. you know, there was word that the pirates have been spotted. Oh, and they're going to be stuck here for a week, too, so we've got a week's worth of time to, to hang out with these boys here. It's interesting. I wonder what they'll do that, with that time. Yeah, and they've just been sitting around like, oh, what do we do? And then suddenly, mm-hmm. uh, Lord Odin, tap, 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 mm-hmm. here he is. Congratu- he congratulates them on making it here, and, you know, haha, I've been waiting for you. And he jumps up and he does a big old smash with his double swords. And Whitebeard White blocks Beard. it with yeah. his big thing, pole arm, whatever you call it. It's got a name, but I forget. That's one of the 12 blades. It's like the best in the world, incidentally. Uh, it was later dubbed that. Nice. Cool. And cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, big hockey clash, looks like. Hockey clash. And Odin introduces himself and says... Uh, join, let me join your crew. It's kind of a reverse Luffy introduction. And I, it, it, he very is Luffy-esque, and I love how Whitebeard's like taken aback by this. Well, and of it's, course. Uh, very He's extremely strong man just jumps up and happily <laughs> says, let me join your crew. Like, what? You know he's going to say, oh, you can join, but you have to call me daddy. This is the one stipulation of my, of my crew. Uh. <laughs> that, that basically is the case. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is epic. I really like, I really like how Whitebeard looks. Yeah, he looks amazing. He looks fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, this is just the the meeting we've been hoping for and waiting for, and we now see that Odin just. It, there's not a lot of complexity here, but Odin's a simple man. He wants to fucking take to the seas. You're gonna fucking help me do it, motherfucker. I can't do it alone. I've tried. I fuck it up every time. I'll hop on board with you boys. So let me join and. Let's go. Out to, now yeah. it should be noted, Odin just like I mean, okay, three years ago at this point, but he'd be just be, he's he is a daimyo like of a region, and he's just gonna bail and just like run out and go do other shit. Probably leave like fucking uh, Kinemon in charge or some shit like that. He's out pirating, uh, take a couple of the boys with him. I wonder which ones are actually gonna come with him and who's gonna stay. Is it just gonna be Nekomamushi and uh, um, yeah, Inugarashi? Or? I mean, Ino, uh, Inu's. Oh, Izo, Izo for sure as yeah. well. Yeah, maybe those three only. Um, well, they they. I mean, that's it. That's the end of the chapter. But uh, that it, I mean, it's it's a simple event. The meeting has happened. He's definitely going to join. I'm interested to see. Like, we know that Whitebeard's gonna be stuck here for a week as was established. I hope that next chapter we get scenes of like him hanging out with Whitebeard like on Wano, just weaving it up in a big way. Ooh, I want a big beauty like beach episode of Whitebeard and the boys in their swimsuits. Damn, that'll be sexual. Um, you know, all all things like that. <laughs> I want fun times next chapter. And then at the end they should leave Wano and uh, go sail with whoever's going to come and then then they can meet Roger and we can see how that happens and and all these other fun things. You know, I, I, the one thing I'll say, Kozuki Odin, trifling ass ho. Odin, just like, he doesn't give a fuck. My dad disowned me, don't care. Became daimyo of a place, I'm a bail. Later on, he meets the Gold Roger Pirates. Fuck the White Beards, I'm gonna join the Gold Rogers. He's a trifling ass ho, is what this guy he's is. A bit of a, he's a bit of a trifler, yes. <laughs> uh, as Monkey Jones famously wrote, <laughs> the triflers is about Kozuki Odin. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's it. I, I, I'm not sure I got much more to say yeah, there's about nothing, the chapter. There's nothing to say, really, because it's, yeah, yeah. it's just sort of like... It's just the facts, madam. This is the facts <laughs> of the, the matter, and uh, mm-hmm. they're, they're nice to look at. I'm excited Great for, chapter. Got to I'm, see I, I'm excited yeah. to see how this links in with Roger and all of the stuff. Like, I don't know how yeah. much of the stuff we're going to see uh, mm-hmm. Odin do mm-hmm. with the Whitebeard Pirates when he leaves. I doubt there's going to be, like... A whole chapter of Whitebeard on Wano. Um, Just a I think couple it's, of pages. You know, it's going to be a, little, a couple of pages montage. of like, yeah. huh? What? You want me to join? Uh, join? You want to join my crew? Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be like, yes, that's all he's going to say. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking forward to fun next chapter. It's going to be 24/7 fun for everybody. Is my anticipation, and I'm very excited for it. This is like. 
Uh, you know, you know me. Like, I don't really give much of a fuck about like the uh, the bounties went up chapters. But like this, this is actual things I care about. This is like character interactions of people I know. Seems like a lot of fun. Maybe some backstory about like the uh, how the Poneglyphs were made, the Kozuki clan's history, Whitebeard and his boys who we you know have an attachment to. I'll, it's kind of fluff. Unless it's that, like, deep lore stuff about the Poneglyphs. Not super important, but it just, ooh, it sounds like fun. Oh, I love fun things that are fun to do. So, uh, that's what I'm hoping for next chapter. Yeah. That's it. That's the end of the chapter, everybody. All right. So, we will see you next time. Uh, next week, it seems like there will be a chapter. So, we will see you there. And do not forget to go to patreon.com slash thepotdcast. Or is it, wait, is it Poddcast Pirates? Patreon.com slash pod fuck. It's the link down below. I forget what it is. Uh, I'll have it updated next time. But uh, give us money by joining the crew. These two are one and the same. Be a member of our crew, giving us at least a dollar. I mean, for all this wonderful work we put in for you, you can you can spare a dollar, sir. A, a, a small doubloon, a small bit of your treasure trove, Mr. Pirate, sir. Um, and join the Discord down below. Talk One Piece. Lots of activity going on there. And follow us on Twitter at Podcast Ahoy, where we tweet out these episodes when they come out. Uh, also, perhaps updates? One of these days. <laughs> Something will happen there. Uh, and, uh, have we gotten any fan shit. art or any interesting things sent to us on the Twitter? Oh, you know, a couple people, like, reposted old fan art, or at least one person, um, and I, I think I retweeted or something. I haven't checked in in a while. Let me go look right now and see if anything... Yeah. Oh, shit! That one guy did do some excellent art. I don't know if you saw this, but it's... Uh, it's. It, I mean, it's just me, like, if I was in Wano, and it's based on... Oh, um, post it. I, I am posting it right there. <laughs> and, ooh. There you are. <laughs> oh, I like... That's, that's very sweet. But we... Okay, someone has to make the Gib Wano equivalent, obviously, so do it immediately. I demand of you, Matt Mad, or, <laughs> or others... Um, although this guy, he had a framework to work off of. This is my uh, my hype for BronyCon, Slime Corp Executive N8 going to BronyCon. But um, nonetheless, a matching pair would be delightful. Uh, okay, that's it. So there you go. At least one good thing's come so far. You're welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. All right, we'll see you next week. Have a good time. Hang in there. Bye. Bye.